Hey, that was my big brother here. Who's that? Oh, you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's been coming around here for about 50 years up until yeah. about last, yeah. within the last year, you know. He's an OG, right? Yeah, that's an OG. He was our first, really, my weather. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. Get in the register, you see. Oh, go ahead. You sit right there. I'm going to let him know. Which I'm going to go ahead and sit with my brother. I'm going to sit down the next two. Salaamu alaykum. Salaamu alaykum. نحمده ونسلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحلن السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمد عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم سل على سيدنا ولانا محمد ولا على سل على سيدنا ولانا محمد مبارك سلم سلوا عليه سلام وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله uh, I guess late Eid Mubarak to some of you. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, Eid al-Fitr is one day, Eid al-Adha is three days. So, of course, Eid al-Fitr was Wednesday. And we spoke that day a little bit about Muslim unity, and I'm going to kind of expound on what I mentioned uh, today, inshallah, uh, and see how far we get. The, you know, a lot of people, you know, they say things emotionally that they shouldn't, shouldn't say or things that are incorrect. Um, you know, and then they realize later on that I shouldn't have said that. Uh, I said things, but everything I said had a base, has a basis to it. Uh, inshallah, alhamdulillah. Uh, you know, as I said, that day, you know, when we look at the situation in Philistine, Masjid al-Aqsa, uh, you know, it's been in the hands of the non-Muslims for the past century. Yeah. And not just the non-Muslims, it's been in the hands of the enemies of Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for the past century. And we see the physical oppression that goes on. And yeah, I mean, it's not hidden anymore. It hasn't been hidden for a while for those who wish to see. But still, people could kind of uh, duck their head in the sand and say, oh, you know, create you know, some other explanation for things. But now it's just blatantly out in the open. What people don't think about is what led us to this point. What was the cause for this for, for them to be able to do this physical oppression with no worries or concerns about any repercussions. You know, absolutely none. Unity in Islam is from Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us in the Quran why he united the hearts of the believers, those who are around Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why he united their hearts. And this is mentioned in verse 103 of Surah Ali Imran. And we'll go over that a little bit later on. Or rather, we'll start going over that right now, inshallah. So the verse starts off with, A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem. وَعَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعٌ وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And most people, they know this part of the verse. 
commonly recited, you know, people talk about unity and how we should work toward unity. You know, where Elis Bata says, you know, and hold fast to the rope of Allah and do not be divided. And this is how it gets translated. But the rest of the verse, you know, tells <coughs> or explains a lot of things. In, it, in actuality, the first part of this verse is the criteria that Ellis Bantal is using to reunite the believers. So when we start off with وَاَتَسِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَاذْكُرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ إِذْ كُنْتُمْ أَعْدَاءً فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ فَأَسْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَةِ إِخْوَانًا وَكُنْتُمْ عَلَى شَفَاءَ قُفَّةٍ مِنَ النَّارِ فَأَنْفَذَكُمْ مِنْهَا كَذَلِكَ يُبَيِّنُ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ آيَاتِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَحْتَدُونَ So in the rest of this verse, Allah Subhanahu wa says that remember, he's reminding us of the favor of Allah. And here the addressees in actuality are the companions of Rasulullah and then through them to the rest of us. So he's saying, remember the favor of Allah. That you were enemies to each other. And Allah Subhanahu wa united your hearts by His grace, by His mercy, by His favor, that you became brothers. And you were on the brink of the pit of fire, and He, Allah Subhanahu wa saved you from it. So He's the one who united the hearts. He is the one who saves from the fire. And then he says, Thus do we make clear our signs that perhaps you will be guided. So those who are able to see this clearly, those are the ones who attain guidance. The unity didn't come from, oh, let's get united. If we look at the companions of Rasulullah from a worldly perspective, there was nothing that should have united them. Social, economically, they were all different. All extremes. In a tribal society, different tribes. And literally, you had tribes who literally, I mean, you know, this is not like an exaggeration literally had been war with each other for hundreds of years and did not miss any opportunity to fight with each other. And Allah SWT says that he united them into one brotherhood, saved them from the fire, and that this is a sign from Allah for those who wish to attain guidance. So the prerequisite for this is وَاَتَسَمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعٌ وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And again, normally gets translated as and hold fast to the rope of Allah and do not be divided. But if everybody's holding fast to one thing, if everybody's hanging on to one thing, you're not going to be divided. And this is what the why here is. It's an explanation of if you do this, then this. That if you hold fast to the rope of Allah, then you won't be divided. And as we went into the details a little bit, you know, as I said, you know, that day, the rope of Allah, Rasulullah said that this is the Quran. But again, when we look throughout Muslim society today, there are more hufas, more memorizers of the Qur'an than there have ever been. 
I mean, it used to be hard to find anyone, and now, you know, in English terms, you could say they're a dime a dozen. Every other person that has a title of Mufti. Scholar this, scholar that. Or scholar S. <clears throat> and yet we are more divided now in reality than we've ever been. This is the situation. The saying of Rasulullah Sussum cannot be wrong. There is nothing that came from his lips except the truth. So what he said, when he said that this is the Qur'an, Hablillah, the rope of Allah is the Qur'an, that is the truth. But what, what the question becomes, what is my understanding of the Qur'an? One is the understanding of the Qur'an as the text, but what is the Qur'an? And we know commonly the Qur'an is Kalam Allah. It is the word of Allah. But when I pick up, pick up the book, it doesn't speak. But even the text of the book tells me, وَمَا يَنْتِقَ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوهَىٰ وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْحَوَىٰ That he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, does not say anything from his own naf, from his own hawa, from his own desires. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوهَىٰ Barely, without a doubt, indeed, everything he says is nothing except revelation. Everything he says is nothing except revelation. And this is not limited to the Quran. Because if you look at the if you look at the revelation of these verses, these verses were revealed when the Rasulullah Sussum was telling Quraysh about the Miraj, about the night journey. And they were denying him. He was not quoting Quran, he was not reciting Quran to them. He was simply telling them what happened. And they denied him and Allah Sata reveals these verses. Because they're saying, oh, he's just making this up. That's the for a while. You know, he's mistaken in what he thought he saw. You know, it's just a dream or a vision. <clears throat> so the reality of the Quran is Rasulullah Sussan himself. And this is the point we will come back to. So if I hold fast to Rasulullah Sussan, then I am holding on to the Quran. And I am holding on to the rope of Allah. And those who do this will not be divided. So this comes back to the situation of the Ummah today. Again, we see the physical oppression. But what's hidden behind that, what has allowed that to happen, is the spiritual oppression. And the reality is that the Haramain, Makkah and Medina both, have been in the hands of the enemies of Allah and His Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, for the past century, since 1924. <coughs> because it was 1924, when the British gave the green light to Abdul Aziz bin Saud to attack Makkah. It was 1924 when he gave the fatwa about 4,000 hajjaj coming from Hadarmouth, Yemen, to make the hajj. That, oh, these are grave worshippers. You know, because anyone who doesn't agree with them is a grave worshipper. These are grave worshippers, so their blood and their lives, their blood and their wealth is lawful for us. <coughs> 
and they massacred 4,000 men, women, and children coming for the Hajj. So who better to pick to ruin the, the spiritual aspect of Islam by giving them control of what everybody considers the center of Islam, Makkah and Medina. Who better to pick to create a university there that is going to, to teach Islam without a soul? See, the British, when they came to the subcontinent, and even when you look at them through the rest of the Arab world, it took them a long time to, uh, to, to fulfill their objective. In India, they, the East India Trade Company was formed in 1600. They didn't fulfill their objective until 1857, which was to take over India. But they learned a lot from that because they learned the way, because India was under Muslim rule. So they knew that the, in order to control India, they had to defeat the Muslims. They weren't worried about anybody else. But what they couldn't understand was what united these people, at least not in the beginning. Because if you look at India, which was India then, which was today India, Pakistan, part of Nepal, uh, actually, southern part of Afghanistan, uh, Bangladesh, part of Burma, all of this was <coughs> India. You had people that normal things that unite people, language, <coughs> culture, <coughs> food, dress, all, you know, just, you know, the way people look. These are things that normally unite people. If you look at India back then, none of these things united the people. Because you had people in the, in the north that didn't look anything like the people in the south. The food in the north was nothing like the food in the south, or the west, or east. The dress was different, everything was different. The languages were different. And yet they were all united. And finally they figured out what united them was the love of Rasulullah. So this is what united the people. So they realized that this is what they had to break, is to break that connection with Rasulullah Because they're united in his love. There are certain criteria of love. Unfortunately these days, you know, love is, 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 is a distant thing because everybody's a narcissist. You know, this especially this social media, you know, realm is a narcissistic world. Just, you know, just love yourself. That's it. But to love somebody, I have to acknowledge their status. And the love re that Allah Spata requires for us to have of Rasulullah is that we love him more than everything else in creation, including ourselves. So that means I have to acknowledge him as better than myself, different than myself, different than all the rest of creation. He is creation, but he's not like any of the rest of creation. And so they figured if we can break that, then we break their connection to the rope of Allah. And once we break that, you know, the common term, divide and conquer. And this is what t it took them 257 years to do in the subcontinent. Other places, also like in North Africa and other places, it still took them a long time. But yet now you see this accelerated process from 1924 until 1948. Major step in the mission accomplished. And then from 1948, other steps, and then now. 
Because once that connection to the rope of Allah is broken, then there is no unity. Because this is the promise of Allah that if you hold on to this rope, then he unites the hearts. Then he makes one brotherhood. If we're not holding on to the rope, So this again is why it was so important for them to put these people in place in the Haramain. You know, it, it's interesting. You know, people think, oh, you know, religious government, Islamic government. They they emphasize the Sharia. You know, and all they know about the Sharia is, oh, if you if you steal, your hand gets cut off. That's that's it. The Sharia demands justice. The Sharia is wrapped in, in mercy. There are other aspects of the Sharia that, that, you know, of course, has become alien because even the most Muslims' definition of Sharia is the same thing with the Islamic, with the non-Muslims think of it. But even if I take those aspects of it, it's interesting if I look at this kingdom. 1924, again, they're given the green light to go and attack. Why are they given the green light? Because they've been, they've already been bought. 5,000 pounds a month. That was the stipend given to Abdul Aziz. Before, when his people asked him about it, oh, this is Jezia. This is how he justified it. Of course, Jezia is something totally different. So 1924 until 1950, alcohol is permitted in the kingdom. It has nothing to do with Islam. The reason they stopped or they prohibited, prohibited alcohol in the kingdom was that in 1950, it's 1948 or 1950, one of those two years, still 24 or 26 years after, One of the princesses killed a <coughs> British counselor. He got drunk and he killed a British counselor. So now they were going to get exposed. So now it's says, oh, you know, we got to ban this. Just take it under the table. Yeah. These are the same people who have given us the petrodollar. This is how these people have enslaved the world, literally, by manipulating currencies, currency that has no backing, artificial money, so everybody else is in debt. And they do something to try to get out of debt and you make them more in debt. So everybody's enslaved. Who came up with that currency? Who came up with the petrodollar? It is a joint venture between Henry Kissinger and King Faisal. Everybody thinks, oh, Faisal was such a good guy. This is how good he was. He gave the world the petrodollar so that, so that, so that the non-Muslims can enslave everybody, especially the Muslims. So this is why, you know, again, when the soul, when the spiritual aspect is destroyed, then it becomes very easy to attack the physical. And this is why what we're seeing today is happening. And people still don't get it. You know, because the hearts are blind. Because again, we have left that rope. We have left our connection to Rasulullah so and we have not, we do not love him the way Allah Father demands that we love him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as I said, you know, we have this, this new, all these new fitnas today. All of this is part of the fitna of the judge. 
You know, it's interesting. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he, he said that the army of Dajjal will consist mainly of women. And I didn't used to understand this. You know, because I'm thinking in my head, army, and I'm thinking, you know, weapons and fighting and all of this. You know, the fifth of the job is very subtle. People lose their iman and don't even realize it. You know, because if somebody's coming and, and attacking my iman, and I know it, then I can defend myself. Yeah, but if it's gone and I don't even know it, what am I going to do? Now I think, oh, you know. And this is where Allah SWT even mentions in Surah Hujrat, you know, for those who, if you understand the verse, for those who are disrespectful to Rasulullah Wasallam, after knowing he is Rasulullah Wasallam. What does he say? He says, أَن تَحْبَتَ عَمَالِكُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَشْعُرُونَ That I will wipe away your deeds, and you won't even know it. So how will you make tawbah for it? How will you repent and return to Allah if you don't even know you've done something wrong? As Allah Subhanahu says, this is a line that anyone who knows who he is, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, cannot cross. Anyone who acknowledges him as Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if, you, if we cross that line, because that acknowledgement in itself should teach us the adab of Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if we cross that line, there is no coming back. But coming back to the army of women, you know, as I said, you know, there are more this, there are more that. There are more alamas today than there have ever been. You know, it's so easy, online course. Get your alama degree. And if you start looking at what they're teaching, and you start analyzing the teachers themselves, it's nothing but feminism, modern day feminism in a veil. That's it. That's it. And how they attract the women is, oh, we're going to teach you how to read the Quran properly. You know, so they teach them a little bit of Tajweed and tell them how they were reading it wrong before. And then they go from there. And then when they talk about Rasulullah Wasallam, again, it's like they're talking about anybody else. And by the time they get out, the only thing they know is haram, shirk, bidah, kafir, and mushrik. Those are the only words they really know because those are the only words that they use. And they label the Muslims as kafir and, and mushrik. And again, when they talk about Rasulullah Wasallam, or when they even listen, you know, they want to listen to people who are going to talk about him like anybody else. And what can you do with that? Um, time's up. So... Inshallah, you know, we may continue this or, or go with another subject later. Uh, but may Allah subhanahu wa help us and may He unite us in the love of Rasulullah. <laughs> and may He give us His own true love and the true love of His beloved Prophet Muhammad, <laughs> his family, his companions, and all of those whom they love. May He protect our brothers and sisters that are being oppressed throughout the world and in Palestine and Gaza and, and Kashmir and wherever the Muslims are being oppressed and may he give them victory over their oppressors. Uh, those, uh, the brother will call the Adhan and then we'll make Sunnah and then continue, inshallah. Uh, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar.
ashadu ala ilaha illallah ashadu ala ilaha illallah ashadu anna muhammadar rasulullah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah Hayya ala as-salam Hayya ala as-salam Hayya ala Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar, Allah 